welcome to Behind the Scenes, where I will showcase the making of two map parts for a Leafstar multi animator project trees. This is another map part that I began to work on back in 2019 alongside Blue Star map parts 34, 35, and 36. I have worked on it occasionally for the past few years because I wanted to get the animation right, or, in other words, go further beyond what I had done prior. This map has been through multiple hosts, thick and thin, but it is finally completed. I will have the finished map at the end card, so you can check it out after this behind the scenes video. This map was originally hosted by Epic Techie, who now uses a different name and YouTube channel. So all the designs and original script of this map were done by them. When I joined this map, it was being rehosted by Indigo Splash. They were part of a roleplay group where I was an active participant and advertised their rehosted project. Seeing the map was about Leafstar, I knew regardless of whether I liked the song or not, I had to join. The parts of the script were divided into different sections of the books and mangas that follow Skyclan's journey. I picked up parts 19 and 20, which took place in Half Queen's Journey Super Edition. Originally, it was encouraged to have read the book or manga where the scene took place. Since Half Queen's Journey was still relatively new back then, I figured I could help out there, as I had the scene rather fresh on my mind. Plus, I still wanted more animation experience from an action-packed scene. This part was the first one I set up with 24 frames per second, and intended to work with twos and threes. It was very intimidating, since until that point I had worked from 15 frames per second and increasingly gone up to 20 frames per second and again down to 18 frames per second. But I wanted to try and learn and get better at using 24 frames per second to my advantage, especially since I wanted to get more time effective with my animations and master better weight and intent in them. However, it is blatantly obvious that despite my intention, the final parts weren't finished until four years later. But it was an amazing learning experience, and despite the delay, I am so proud of the final result. Epic Becky's design for Leafstar was simple and nice, down to the silhouette. Back in 2019, I aim to expand my characteristics and learn how to draw different body shapes. Because of it, the set design for Leafstar was a nice starting point. I visually emphasized Leafstar's leafy parts on her chest and elbows. I figured it would be an easy starting point for setting her design down and making her recognizable. I also gave her big ears and... Um, how would I describe her tail? I gave her a pear-shaped tail. It is definitely a tail shape that I hadn't done before. Her markings were also very animation friendly, simple and neat. If I had done the design myself, it probably would have been more detailed. However, simplicity is good with animation, especially if you want to complete something on a tighter schedule. But I still admittedly rarely follow that recommendation myself. One of the most common questions I get from my audience is Who is my favorite Warrior Cats character? Leafstar is my one and only baby. I love her so much. No other Warrior Cats character is more relatable to me. I love how we see her flaws and good moments. I like how she tries to think outside of the warrior's box and wants to be accommodating and open to solutions that could solve issues outside of the traditional warrior cat's way. When she's wrong, she can admit fault and learn from it, which is refreshing in the warrior's world. 
When Sky Clan was finally introduced to the other four clans by the Lake Territories, I was so, so happy. Words can't describe how long I had waited for that moment, ever since Firestar's Quest Super Edition. I could go on and on about why I love Leafstar and why I think she is one of the more deeply developed warrior cats out there, but sadly, this video isn't an essay why I love Leafstar, so we will move on. Just like all my animations, I began with a storyboard and then moved on to sketching. I drew rough shapes for some sketches before doing the more detailed sketch on top of it. Before this, I haven't done my sketches like this. However, there are sketches with just plain shapes and silhouettes help me to have better consistency between the frames. If you find it hard to keep the size of your character or certain body parts of a character consistent, I highly recommend this technique. A thing that I didn't realize while I did Leafstar's design in my style, lining the frames was such a breeze. Cleanup took a while, but not as long as I anticipated it to. The part that took forever is the third shot where Leafstar leaps down on Raven as the kin attacks Skyclan's camp. That was primarily because the majority of the frames were full bodies. I can easily say that over half of the work time went into the third shot, including the sketching, cleanup and coloring. During the cleanup phase, I corrected and tweaked some of the movement that had gotten outdated by the old sketches. The final shot where Leafstar casts the final glance at the camp is the only shot I decided to go ahead and completely redo. The final shot originally looked like this, before I changed it to what it is now. I'm so glad I decided to tweak it, since I rushed the final shot when I was originally storyboarding it. Quality over quantity is a mindset I value very highly. So I'm pleased that I took extra time, even if I didn't need to, to make it look better so it wouldn't track the rest of the animation with it. Now it makes more sense to the scene than compared to what it originally looked like. Normally I would color the characters before working on the background. However, this time I did the backgrounds first before coloring the characters. Before touching the backgrounds, I made a quick concept drawing on painful side to visualize the idea I wanted to achieve. This was also a great way to create a color palette for the backgrounds. For the rain, I created graphic objects in Adobe Animate. Within that object, I created a rain animation that when extended on the timeline would keep looping the rain. This way, I didn't need to copy-paste any frames over hundreds of frames. It is a very useful function that I highly recommend for looping movements, such as running cycles, bulk cycles, or in this instance, continuous rain. Coloring was also a very straightforward process. As the design for a leaf star was simple, I took less than a week to color everything. Once again, the third shot was the most time-consuming part. However, it was really rewarding to see, frame by frame, how Leafstar in her fully colored glory began to flow within her movement. This is also why coloring is my favorite part of animating. Coloring usually indicates to me that the work is on a final stretch and usually gives me the final push to finish whatever I'm working on. Just like with Blue Star map parts 34, 35, and 36, I originally wanted to add shading to this Leaf Star animation. However, the longer I worked on it, and the more I ran through the facts that A. This animation takes place during a nighttime fight, B. I had already spent several years progressing this animation on and off, and C. Would the shading really add anything to the final animation? Because I was actually pretty happy with what I had so far, even though the thought of shading the animation overshadowed me at the back of my mind. It is a personal decision that has taken a lot of my willpower to follow through. Not because it is difficult to execute, 
but because of the mindset I value over anything else. Quality over quantity. If I had the power to decide, without taking into account my living and all the adulting that I need to do, I would make every animation pixel perfect with detail and make it visually as mesmerizing as I could. However, it isn't sustainable. And that has been a really hard pill for me to swallow. Especially since I want to deliver quality and share work that I'm proud of. Having said that, I don't mean to drop on quality, even if I strip away from some visual elements of my future animations. Instead, I want to focus more on that value in other aspects of my animations, such as movement and timing, and later worry whether I have time to add to the finer details. Long story short, since the Leafstar map parts were more focused on the movement and atmosphere, I decided to hone and perfect those aspects of the animation, rather than put more time into shading or similar visual details. As I had every aspect I could do in Adobe Animate, I moved the file into Adobe After Effects. I focused on delivering the scene's atmosphere right, since I didn't do the character shading. This meant that, as I had done the flat coloring and cell shading in Adobe Animate, I added some extra layers of shading and Gaussian blur between each layer to enhance the feeling of depth. When the first passes of the editing were done, I exported the final file and... Stripes? Lots and lots of stripes within the blurred edges of the shading? I was honestly on the brink of tears because I was so proud and confident that I was so close to completion and could just put the project to rest. I learned later from a friend that the striped effect is called banding and that was no fault of mine but the programs. It was devastating for me to feel like a ton of work had gone to quote unquote waste because the rendering was being more difficult than necessary. I ended up playing around with the effects to try and find a way to lessen the banding. I tried out different layer effects and added a color layer that cooled down the colors, which turned out to be really helpful. The scene looked so much better after that, plus the banding issues I had with shots 3 and 4 especially nearly fully disappeared. I was able to save the animation, even though it felt like it was nearly doomed by a render mishap. Before I end this video, I would like to give a special shout out to all the hosts who have hosted this map. Epic Becky for the idea and original script, Indigo Splash, Kimia, and Saturn Skies for pulling this map to the finish line. I'll link all their channels in the description below. Check them out, they all deserve it. Thank you so much for watching this behind the scenes. Check out the finished map project at the end card. Everyone did a fantastic job and it is so nice to see varying talents, both experienced and beginner artists, being part of the project. My finished two parts can also be found on the end card, in case you want to rewatch them or haven't seen them before. Stay safe and I hope you all have a fantastic day.